This week in Nerf, we've got problems for thrifters, new Kickstarter blasters, and an open source blaster. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Diving right on in, let's talk about savers. Savers is a big place for Nerf thrifters to go and find their blasters. It's a great joy to go in, find something you didn't expect to see for a great price, pick it up, and just have a new piece for your collection. I know I enjoy it, and there's plenty of people in the community that do as well, but it does seem that there is a shift in the way Savers is doing business after all of the unfortunate things that have been going on in the U.S. lately, Savers has taken a stance that it will no longer place anything that resembles a gun on shelves. This means all of our toy nerf blasters that we look to uh, thrift and find and have fun with are no longer going to be on shelves. Now this appears to have come down from the top and this post from Reddit by Pharma Dan is the first, I believe the first bit of news that we saw about it and it has been followed up by several others including a uh, local nerfer here, Bobo Bob, who has talked to management and confirmed at least in our area that that is the case that they are no longer stocking nerf blasters they're going straight to a recycling plant which is horrible to think about all of the great deals that we have come to know and love from savers being gone now this is hopefully something that will not be a permanent change hopefully as the political climate changes maybe if we actually fix some of our problems here but we're not going to get political because that would be just a massive rabbit hole. Basically, hopefully this does not last forever. Hopefully we can see savers start to shift back to placing toys back on shelves because they are toys. And ideally it's, I don't find much from Goodwill. I don't find much from other places. It's namely been savers where I have found the best deals and the biggest variety of blasters and just the best stuff in terms of thrifting. That's going to be no longer the case. Now I know how it's affected me in my area, but I'm curious to see how it's affected all of you in other parts of the US and Canada. If it is becoming an issue, if you are seeing less or no blasters on shelves, or if this is some stores choosing to accept that and some stores not perhaps, I am very curious to see how this actually goes into effect over time because I was still seeing blasters slightly after the initial announcement went live or the initial kind of discovery happened. So I'm very, very curious to see how this all plays out and hopefully it won't be a forever thing because like I said, it's very much a, a part of this hobby, an aspect of this hobby that can be very fun and exciting for a lot of us. Even if it's not your particular cup of tea, Someone else in the community probably loves it and it's a big blow that it is no longer a thing for them. Also consider that we no longer may be able to find all the affordable blasters that we had grown accustomed to, especially helps with trading and things like that. So it, it, it affects various aspects of this hobby which is unfortunate, but we'll see how things play out as this goes on. Definitely let me know in the comments what uh, things are like in your area if you are a thrifter at Savers uh, right around now. Moving on, let's talk about the Cobra One. This is a Kickstarter from Loveland Arms for a 130 FPS compact blaster that has an inline clip or mag, um, I believe is the correct term, inline but it holds three darts or two darts inside and then one dart in the barrel if you're using full lengths or up to five darts total if you're using short darts, which is interesting. It's kind of neat to have a small compact secondary blaster that has built-in storage that you can fire off several shots if you need to. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy regarding this blaster on Reddit when the creator first announced it, calling it like the best blaster and uh, there was a little bit of a pushback, but hopefully they have learned more from the community for this venture and they will listen to the community as they go forward to help them create the best product they can. We know that community input and, and being receptive to it leads to some great things, namely the caliber, which I reference I feel like a lot because Captain Slug is always listening and always iterating and adapting. And that's huge. So hopefully they will take that into consideration. All the things that were suggested in a big thread discussing it. Uh, because th this, this could be interesting. This could be a fun blaster. I know I like options. I say that all the time. So I don't mind there being more of them. Uh, I hope that they certainly 
become a part of the community and listen and discuss and learn and, and get integrated because I feel like that's the best way for new companies to really get involved and uh, get the best investment for their time and their money in creating products. But that's just my personal opinion on, on, on this. I don't want to get too, too preachy or, or hypothetical about things and what ifs and all that, but uh, it's regardless something still worth talking about is basically the point I want to get across. Whether you uh, are not a fan of it or not, it's still worth discussing and it is coming in at a price point of around $90 to $100 on Kickstarter for one depending on whether or not you are getting the early bird special. Uh, but it's something that I'm curious to see how it evolves over time, if it stays the same or if it does change and grow for the better. But uh, definitely let me know your thoughts about this particular blaster and the aesthetic and the look and the style and all of that within it. Do you think 130 FPS is a good place for it? Do you think it should go higher, lower? I'm curious, let me know. I definitely love hearing from all of you. Uh, one other thing to talk about before we get into the modern video of the week is the Blaster Forge Micro. Uh, recently, this blaster that was for sale on Etsy through Blaster Forge has now been made open source. All the files are available on Thingiverse, and this is a, a pump action blaster that uses the Worker Expanded Plunger Tube from, I believe, the Prophecy Kit, and uh, should give you decent performance. I have not gotten my hands on one yet, hopefully I will in the future, uh, to get my thoughts out on it in terms of whether it compares to the Prophecy, the Caliber, and uh, Modern Retaliators, those things. but. It is cool that there is a 3D printed Springer option now, aside from just the caliber. Uh, it's cool to see variety and see different takes on things. This one is, I believe, fully 3D printed and does not require a hardware kit. It may not be as versatile as the caliber, but it is an option. It's something I'm very curious about and I love that they have made it open source and something that people can give a try for a minimal investment if they have a 3D printer. You've got a plunger tube, go ahead, pop it in with, with the rest of the internals that you need. Uh, so I think, I think it's interesting and I think it's very cool that they have provided this for the community free of charge if they want to have it printed. Uh, so I'm very curious to see what people do with it and how it performs in the hands of the community. And I just wanted to share that because the links will be down below and uh, I, I wanna see more variety of blasters out in the field is really what I love. I love going to games and seeing a big variety of different blasters, different, whether well, it's different paint jobs, with different shells, different uh, propulsion types, all kinds of stuff. I love seeing variety on the field at big games. It's something that I thoroughly enjoy. So this, this to me is cool. But let's go ahead and move on to the model of the week, which is something I am super excited about. Uh, this was posted by the Jesus Freak on Reddit or Adrian Ward on Facebook. And this is just one of the most epic sleeper mods I have ever seen. This is a recon, but stuffed inside of that recon is a fully automatic flywheel blaster. Just let that sink in. That is a recon that is flywheel powered. And just look at how jam packed everything is in there to power all of it. They custom made flywheels and a, a, a cage for all of this. It's just, it's so cool and so compact and so fit in there. I would just love to see this out on the field and just the surprise of players when this little recon starts shooting darts and this hits around like 110, 120 FPS. So it's no slouch, like it'll be fine at a super stock game or HVZ or things like that. And I just, oh, it's so cool. Uh, this is one of the coolest mods uh, that I think we've ever been able to feature because of just the creativity and ingenuity in stuffing all of that in there and making it function. It is so cool and so unique uh, that I don't know that we will see anything like it or another one of these for uh, quite a while because this totally took me by surprise. When I saw the video on Facebook, I was just so excited. I knew it had to be Mod of the Week. And uh, I just, there's a few threads linked down below for this. Go check them all out. One is to Reddit that shows the internals picture uh, and discusses things. One is an FPS video that shows you both snap firing and, and uh, uh, full revving. And the other is the initial shooting demonstration video on Facebook, which all of all of which are cool. I love this blaster. This is this is sweet. I just love this thing. Go check out his work. Uh, I I dig it. I just I, I gotta stop because I would rant about this thing all day because I love it and I want to use it, but I can't, and that makes me sad. 
Uh, so let's move on to the video of the week, and that comes to us from Blaster Tech this week. I have been on a binge of gameplay footage lately. You know I always love it. But uh, with more and more gameplay footage coming out, I love sharing it with all of you, and this is no exception. There is a slight difference with this one. This, this is Squad Supremacy footage, which is competitive gameplay footage. Uh, but there is something very interesting about the blaster that Dean is using. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but if you watch and you look at what's going on with this blaster, you may notice a certain lack of something that is very interesting and very cool. Uh, that I am very, very intrigued by and I think is super interesting. So go check that out. The gameplay itself is awesome and I love the way they play and the places they get to play over there on Australia. So definitely, definitely an interesting paintball field they get to play at and always cool to see the way people nerf all around the world. So go check that out. Now, if you have any suggestions for Mod of the Week or Video of the Week, always leave them down below. Sometimes I get suggestions that we end up using or people suggested last week, the Mod of the Week this week that totally agree. I saw it and I saw the comments like, yeah, we got to feature that. Um, but I love, I love finding out things that I may have missed from all of you. So I always enjoy getting that. And uh, leave your comments on everything down below, your thoughts on all the stuff going on this week. If you are new to the channel and want to subscribe to see more in the future, we do Nerf News every single Saturday morning. We do gameplay, we do reviews, we do all kinds of stuff on this channel. And if you want your name down below, like you saw earlier, uh, you can get it up there for $1 on Patreon. Every dollar adds up and helps this channel do even more and more in the future, which I am so excited to share with all of you the things I have planned and going. It's going to be... Uh, I'm. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I, I don't want to say too much, but I'm very excited about all of the different plans moving forward. But let's let's go ahead and, and put the video of the week right over here. And we'll put last week's episode right up here. And uh, if you want to hit that Patreon up, that can go here. And I'll squeeze my, my link for subscribing right over here if you want to. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.